This is a GCSE video on radiation, radioactivity and half-life. In the last video, we saw that there were three different types of radiation. Alpha, beta and gamma. Radiation occurs randomly over time. These radioactive particles randomly decay over time. So if we take an alpha decay as an example, we have uranium-235, and that decays into thorium-23190. And because it's alpha decay, we know that that is a helium nucleus. So if all this uranium, if we've got a block of uranium, and some of it, every now and then, randomly, is turning into thorium, then eventually the amount of uranium that we have is going to decrease as more and more and more of it turns into this thorium. So if there's less uranium, then it's less likely that this decay equation is going to happen, and so fewer helium nuclei, fewer alpha particles are going to be released. So as time goes on, radiation gets less and less and less and less. Now the time taken for the levels of radiation to fall by half is called the half-life. The half-life of any radioactive isotope can be anywhere from milliseconds to thousands of years. It completely depends on the type of radiation and the type of isotope that we are talking about. As part of the GCSE specification, you have to understand what a half-life graph looks like. Um, and be able to calculate the half-life from that graph. So here is a typical half-life graph from an exam question. As you can see, it starts off with eight counts per minute, that is the number of alpha particles or beta particles or gamma rays detected per minute. And here it starts off at eight, and then it halves to about four, just over four. And then later it halves again to just over two, and then it halves to just over one, and then it halves to just over a half. And so you can see that this is forming quite a clear curve. Now this is a sample of carbon-14, and as I spoke about before, the time here in years is thousands of years. Sometimes that can be milliseconds if it's a different isotope. So how to calculate half-life from this? Well, you can take a point where it's eight to begin with, for example, and then you find out, you look on the graph where half of that value is gonna be, in this case, four, and then you can draw your line from four to exactly where it meets the line, and then come down from the line to the x-axis, and here you've got the amount of time it takes to go from eight counts per minute to four counts per minute. And that time is 5,500 years. And that is how you calculate half-life from a graph. You don't have to use 8 and 4. You could also do 4 to 2. And if we go along from 2 and then down from here, we can see that it's taken another 5,500 years to halve from 5,500 to 11,000. And then if we go from 2 to 1, it's gone from 11,000 to about 16,500, which is another 5,500 years. So every 5,500 years, the number of radioactive particles emitted, the amount of radiation emitted, is decreasing by half every 5,500 years. So the half-life of carbon-14 from this graph is 5,500 years. Radiation doesn't just come from
from man-made sources like uranium fuel for nuclear power plants. Um, there is also a lot of radiation just around us um, in, in general everyday life. And we call that background radiation. Background radiation is exactly what it says. It is radiation that is in the background, it is around us all the time. Background radiation can be natural, but it also can be man-made. At the moment, I am receiving some radiation from the environment around me, and the majority of the radiation that I'm receiving from around me is from radon gas in the atmosphere. Radon is a slightly radioactive gas, um, and it comes usually from broken down uranium, and uranium is a naturally occurring mineral. Radon gas is radioactive and it releases a very small amount of radiation around us and it varies slightly how much radiation we get around us depending on where we are in the world. So that's our first natural source of radiation. The second natural source of radiation is what we call cosmic rays. Cosmic rays come from space, they come from nuclear sources in space, they can come from stars, they can come from a, lot, a large range of different sources, but they come all the way from outer space or from our own sun and they collide with our atmosphere and our Earth. We're protected by what you can see here called the magnetosphere, the magnetic field of our Earth. So we're protected from most of the most harmful ones by the magnetosphere, but some of them do get through and we do feel the effects of some cosmic rays here and we can sense that with extremely sensitive Geiger counters or radiation sensors. So our second source of natural background radiation is cosmic rays. There is also man-made background radiation, usually coming from modern technologies. The biggest source of background radiation is X-rays. X-rays deliver a small amount of radiation to your body and it is mostly absorbed by your bones and not absorbed by your flesh, which gives an image of your bones and that is how we tell if any bones are broken in a hospital. For you, for an X-ray, it's not especially dangerous to have one or two X-rays because of the small dosage, but for the X-ray technician, it is much more dangerous because he probably does the same thing 100 times per day. And so when you go to get an X-ray, you will notice that the technician stands behind a lead screen to block out the majority of that radiation so he doesn't receive a deadly dose of it over a long period of time. So X-rays are our first source of man-made background radiation. Our second source of man-made background radiation you might be able to predict is nuclear weapons testing. Um, during uh, the 40s, 50s and 60s and 70s there was a lot of nuclear weapons testing um, and that has continued um, and that radiation from those nuclear weapons is released into the atmosphere and we receive small doses of it every day just from being in the atmosphere. So nuclear weapons testing or nuclear accidents such as that at Fukushima or the one um, several, uh, several decades earlier at Chernobyl, um, those are other sources and they are our second source of man-made background radiation. If you are a triple student, if you're studying triple science at IGCSE level, then you need to be able to interpret the half-life graphs, which we talked about earlier, but also be able to take into account background radiation. So if in the question they give you a similar graph to this, but they say that the background radiation is one count per minute, then you would, have, you would be given a curve that's slightly further up, and you would have to interpret that whilst subtracting the background radiation. So in summary, there are two different types of background radiation. There are man-made sources of background radiation, such as X-rays, or nuclear weapons testing, or nuclear disasters. And there are natural sources of background radiation, such as cosmic rays and radon gas.